Welcome to Math with Mr. J. In this video, I'm going to cover how to find the missing number in an equivalent ratio. And as you can see on your screen, four examples we're going to go through together in order to get this down. So let's take a look at number one, where we have 5 to 15 equals x to 30. And that x is our variable or missing piece. So we need to find what x equals. Now for these equivalent ratio problems, we can either use multiplication or division. So let's take a look here at what we're given. We're given 5 to 15 and a 30 over there. Now, remember, in ratios, order matters. So this 15 goes with the 30, the second number of the ratio. So let's think, how do we get 15 to equal 30? Well, we can multiply 15 by 2. Now, when it comes to equivalent ratios, if you multiply or divide both your numbers of, a, of the ratio by the same thing, you get an equivalent ratio. So if we multiply that 15 by 2 and then multiply that 5 by 2, the same thing, we get an equivalent ratio. So 5 times 2 gives us 10. So x equals 10. I'm going to rewrite this ratio and show how uh, we can use division as well. So 5 to 15 equals x to 30. You can also go the opposite way. So you can think, okay, how do I get 30 to equal that 15? Well, I can divide by 2. So what number can I divide by 2 to get 5? Well, I know x divided by, or I'm sorry, 10 divided by 2 gives me 5. We get the same answer either way. Number two, x to 18 equals 2 to 6. So let's take a look at what we're given here. And our 18 and our 6 correspond. So how do we get 18 to equal 6? Well, we can divide by 3. So we need to think, how do we get x to equal 2? What divided by 3 will give me 2? And we know 6 divided by 3 equals 2. So x equals 6. Or let's do it with multiplication here. We can see that, let's go the opposite way, 6 times 3 gives me that 18. So we can do 2 times 3 gives us an answer of 6. Both ways work. It just kind of depends your preference and how you think through the problem. So again, multiplication or division. Now number 3 and 4 are a little different. Uh, they take an extra step here and you'll see why. So number 3, 7 to 21 equals 10 to x. So let's take a look at what we're given. How do we make 7 equal 10 using multiplication or division? Well, we can't. So what we need to do here, these are still going to be equivalent. We just don't have a whole number that we can multiply or divide 7 by to equal 10. So what you would do in this case, we need to simplify 7 to 21 that way, it will give us a ratio that we can use uh, to find that x. So 7 to 21 simplified, we can divide both of these by the common factor of 7 to give us a simplified ratio. And our simplified ratio is 1 to 3, which is equivalent to 7 to 21. So we didn't change the value, we just simplified it. Now, let's put our right side in and this is going to be much easier. So how do I get 1 to equal 10? Well, I can multiply by 10, and let's do that to the 3 as well. 3 times 10 gives us an answer of 30.
So x equals 30. Number four, this one we have to simplify before we find what x equals here. So again, we know this because we can't multiply or divide six to give us by a whole number to give us 27. So let's simplify four sixths, or four to six. So a common factor is two. So divide both of them by two, and we get the simplified ratio of two to three. And that equals x to 27. Again, a simplified ratio is equivalent. We're not changing the value of the problem or ratio. So how do we get three to equal 27? Well, we multiply it by nine. We do the same thing to our two to give us that x. So two times nine equals 18. So x is going to equal 18. So there you have it. There's how you find the missing number in an equivalent ratio. Hopefully that helped. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, peace.